You have said that you resent the idea of being called an African American, that yes. you are a black American. Yes. Explain. If you accept the handle of African American, that says that you don't accept being an American American. I don't want to be called African American. I'm an American American. My people have died and done everything for this country. You don't I don't like, like the black people. Why not? Just because. We were here in... That's that. I don't like black people either. There you go. So it's just you don't like black people. I don't like black people. Are they, are they so different? I mean, am I so different of you? I'm, is a black man so, a woman so different of you? Yes. In which ways? Enlighten me. They might have the education, they might have the money, they might have whatever. But the fact remains is they're still black. So what? So what? What? They're black. It's just, it's a... When, when, I, was a, when I grew up as a young girl, we, we had a part of it, and that is how we were here. The white man, then the colored man, then the black man. All right, so we just uh, listen to that bullshit. Anyways, let's look at biracials, coloreds, mixed black with whatever. Let's look at the history of that just in America. We pull up some articles here from the 1800s. $25 reward. Ran away on the 19th of April from W.T. Stevens Plantation, seven miles below Wharton, a mulatto boy named Tom, about 28 years old, five foot eight inches high, heavy build, and deep set eyes and heavy eyebrows. Was raised in Milan County, Texas, by Joseph Harlan, and is supposed to be there on his or on his way to Mexico. The above reward will be repaid on his arrest and confinement in any jail until delivered to the unders undersigned or $50 if taken in Worlston or adjoining counties and delivered to him alone. So $25 just to let you know that's like 2500 if you did for inflation $3000 to go yoink somebody up so you go around just yoinking up slaves you get them. But Mulattoes was on the run too. Let's look at the next article. Mulatto Cook available for sale. Inquire of the Printers, March 21st, 1795, Baltimore. A mulatto cook for sale. What's this? Uh, 35 reward. Runaway since the 29th of January, 1851. The Negro Antonio Anthony, yeah, well, alias William, and well known journeyman baker, about 40 years of age, 5 foot 7 or 8 inches tall, yellowish complexion, strong constitution, large head, big nose, thick lips, large flat feet, a large burnt scar on the chest. A piece of one ear bitten off and speaking English and French. Okay, pause on that. Listen to how they just pigeon this in there. He has a large burnt scar on his chest. Who gave him the scar on his chest? Somebody burnt him all across his chest. The mulatto boy, five foot seven. A piece of his ear was bitten off. Who bit a piece of his ear off? Who bit a piece of his ear off? Bite a piece of the ear off? What the hell kind of crazy this is the life of the Negroes in America before 1865? $100. It's like 10000 Reward, runaway. The mulatto boy Ben Coleman or Brown, age 22 years, 5 foot 2, 3 inches high and is of light complexion, well set and has been of the habit of making permits to go up and down the river. So, looks like old homeboy was pretty smart though. He used one of them permits and got up out of there. On the run, got 10000 for him. You got a lot of bounty hunters on you for that. $10, eh. I've scanned it from subscribers dwelling on the 6th. A Negro girl, Fanny, about 30. Has lost her front teeth. Very dark skin. Took with her her daughter, a mulatto, aged about seven. So I don't know what happened to the lady's teeth. She's 30 years old. 
and she has a daughter that's a mulatto. You know where the mulatto came from, and she's on the run. Run away from the subscriber living in Northampton County, North Carolina. On the 10th April 1769, a mulatto woman, slave named Anus, about 21 years of age, near as 5 foot high, thick and well fed, straight hair, feared on the back part of her neck by cupping, oh, excuse me, seared on the back part of her neck by cupping, has a scar on the elbow joint of her right arm, branded on the right cheek E, and on the left R, is very cunning, and well endeavor to make her escape. Whoever apprehends the said slave and secures her, so that I can get her, if taken in this province, shall have thickets. Ah. $30, $30 reward, maybe 5 reward if they're of 7. Somebody took this girl, who's only 21, burnt the back of her neck, and then took a, a branding, a hot iron, with the E on it, stuck it on her right cheek, and then on the left, stuck an R. So she's walking around with an E and an R branded on her face, plus scars on her body. And her life is just, you, you don't even, we couldn't even imagine what her life is like. This is a mulatto girl, 21, 1769. That's her life. Burnt on both sides of your face. Biracial. This is the inflation for what it would be. Look at this article. The people of Indiana at their late election have by a special vote ratified the following and made it a part of parcel of their new constitution. Section 1. No Negro or Mulatto shall come into or settle in this state after the adoption of, the const of this constitution. Section 2. All contracts made with any Negro or Mulatto coming into the state contrary to the foregoing section shall be void, and all persons who shall employ or otherwise encourage such Negro or Mulatto to remain in the state shall be fined in any sum of not less than $10 nor more than $500. Now listen, if you ain't just read that, the state of Indiana made it a part of their constitution that no Negro or Mulatto biracial shall come into or settle in the state after the adoption of this constitution. And if any of you have, section two, if any of you have made any deals with Negroes or they had previous business with them coming into the state, that's all void. We don't care and we will find you. They completely racially banned black people and biracials from the state of Indiana. <laughs> It, it don't even, it don't want to, it don't even, ah, moving on. Another mulatto, Sandy, about 35 years of age, stature is rather low. Says he's a horse jockey, greatly addicted to drink, and when drunk, is insolent and disorderly. He took with him a white horse, much seared with traces and is which it is expected he will endeavor to dispose. Another mulatto, 35 years of age, stuck all his life being a slave. Yeah, so, that's the history of mulattoes in America. Um, if any of them or any of you thought that biracial people weren't black in America, you're wrong. They're, that's the reason we let them in, because their lives are absolutely hell, just like ours. There may have been some difference here and there, but a lot of them that were up in the house next to next to Master, next to Boss and Miss Ann, it was real crazy. Real crazy. So we've always accepted them. Now, does that mean what we have to understand as American Africans, Afro-Americans, that's not the culture of black people around the rest of the world. That's not the culture typically in the islands in the Caribbean. That's not the culture in South America. In Africa, that definitely ain't the culture. We start with the islands. Um, it's it's the, the mulattoes were enslaved there, but there was a little bit of a higher stature for mulattoes in the Caribbean. Um, there's that painting that shows a breakdown of all of them, but some of them were given house duties and it wasn't as harsh. It wasn't as free as the white man, but it wasn't as harsh. And it, sometimes it was harsh. It's, it's a little bit fuzzy in the Caribbean. You actually have the uh, Haitians starting the fight with the mulattoes. There's an issue there with 
the loyalty of the mulattoes, they say. Haiti's a complex thing. Um, there's still a colorism thing to today, even in Jamaica. Uh, a guy, uh, Caribbean, actually wrote about it, Eric Woodard in Tropic Death. He talks about the colorism issues in the uh, West Indies and the identity issues with everybody and what they do. They were doing exactly what we were doing. They were getting perms in their head, bleach in their screen, they, they skinned. You, you know what our, our some of y'all parents, some of our grandparents was doing. You gotta get that conk up in your head. Had a jerry curl. You know. You know what it is up to the day. So they had it just like we had it, but there was a little bit of elevation, but you still see that it's strong, whereas ours really shifted in the sixties. At least we thought, but you got people like Sammy Sosa, you know, doing to his skin, whatever. Um, a lot of other brothers they say doing doing that to their skin. Um you know, it's just like MJ. MJ always wanted to be accepted by them folks, and it drove him crazy trying to change their skin. That's one thing the Afro-American has. It's leaning towards we got the more of the identity with the the, the mixed breeds, the mulattoes, becoming black, being black-minded. Um, of course, if you looked at Malcolm X and you seen an actual colored picture of him, he would be labeled colored in South Africa. So some of our biggest heroes, Booker T. Ida B, like some of our biggest heroes are biracial, always. Um, our thing is a lot different here. Like the homie Ice T, even up to today, he's always held it down. He's never acted funny. Compare him to somebody from South Africa, it's completely different. The colors in South Africa have a funny history. They're held to a higher standard. They're, they're far above blacks and maybe Indians, but still beneath the white man. Like the crazy lady said, it's the white man, then the black man. First comes the white man, next comes the colored, then come. What kind of, your woman is sitting there and saying another man comes before you and y'all are all right with that. But you see that, that, we got that devil in the head. Billy Fuller said, we got a little German on our, on our shoulder. You got a whispering in your ear and that's where you get so much hatred, internal hatred. Uh, your blackness. You walking around, okay, you're light-skinned and straight hair, but you got a black person's nose. Like, it's obvious that we can all... We all see it, you know? But, and that drives them crazy, not being accepted, rather than breaking off. Because in South Africa, the coloreds make up the majority of the uh, of Cape Town. The coloreds in the Koi sand, all light-skinned. The Koi naturally light. So it's it's... Why don't they take it over, is the question. Why are they just servants of these people? You know? You ever seen their top white party, the DA? You ever seen them run a colored candidate for president? They're the majority of the people and you haven't run a colored candidate. And the coloreds are right cool with that. Now, it's changing a lot. A lot of people was mad at uh, whatever the girl's name is, Tyla. Tyla, Tila, whatever the girl's name is. She was mad, you know, they came over here. She said she wasn't black, which to her, she isn't black. They're completely separate. But you know what they are? I've been in South Africa. They're like, they're like Latinos. So you go in a black bar and there's like coloreds in there and they're all chilling. It's really different with the younger ones. The older ones are coons. That's another story. But the younger ones, they understand that we have jobs. Like none of us are in power. Coloreds, like you go into a restaurant, coloreds are like the waiters and stuff. Not that there ain't black people too, but usually they put coloreds in like a middle management position. Like you go inside the bank and like all the managers are there. I've seen some crazy shit down there. But you go, you like see these, you see them in the back boardroom. You're trying to talk to the bank and getting something set up here, you know. And she got to go ask the big fat white man what to do. Then gets yelled at and stuff. And I'm like, ah, let me not bring my money up in this bank. I've seen it up close. I've seen it. But my butcher was a color too. And I used to talk to him about it and everything. And he said, you know, with the young ones, we ain't with that shit. Because we see what it is. They're trying to fight for the struggle too. The colors live in shacks, man. They got, they got a place called, uh, what is that? The Flats in South Africa? You would not want to go there. They got a hood up in Namibia. They're around. The coloreds have their own section and their own culture of people, but they've been used as a buffer class too. And I think, again, a lot of the young ones are starting to see that. So it's different. We just got to respect that. They're coming along too. They're starting to get their own identity and nationalism. So it's peaking with them. And that's our culture coming through. They're being racially proud. Some of them are seeing it. But historically, nah, the coloreds was acting funny. Black people helped and fought in the war against other black people in the... Uh, South African Defense Force, but yeah, the big, big, it, it was funny. It's, it's funny. The colored history is funny. 
and they gotta admit to it now some of them did fight against apartheid there was that but uh yeah so we can't we can't push that on every, and everyone we gotta understand all our culture versus everyone else's but let me ask this now for you to say like biracial people ain't black that ain't you know what i mean fuck all the rest of them let me ask you this would it be better on planet earth for us as black people if everybody wanted to be black and everyone liked black people versus not the way it is now i'm the boogeyman but i ain't go around killing a billion people in the last 500 years if we change that and everybody wanted to be black wouldn't that be better so my thing is I say all biracial people and colored should be allowed in to rules. You can't be cooning, don't be acting funny, and we need you. We, I don't want to force it, but we do need you to procreate with a black person and come on back over to the side. You got to put your blood back in with us. But other than that, no, because of the history, you heard what them biracial people do. Anybody who think that they ain't, they have nothing to do with black. If you lived in America in 1830, a few hundred years ago, that's nothing. Your life would be hell. You, I could even explain it to you. We don't even know. We just know you got burnt on your face with a E and an R on both sides. Absolute insanity. So as far as that goes with the biracials, with the colored brothers and sisters, y'all are down. I'm with y'all. I want y'all to have Cape Town. I want y'all in with black people here. I want y'all to fix the islands. You know, it's a little funny. Jamaican Obama down there. I don't know. It's a little funny going around, but I hope that y'all come together and we get everything. We come together on unifying on the ide ideology that we are black and we want power for black people, all of them, be it mixed or not. But the struggle continues. Hold it down. One. And uh, one more thing here. The biracial bonus round. No, I'm just playing. One more thing to add on. Yes, we totally accept biracials in America as being black. Um, this isn't just directly directed at them, but everybody who comes here that's black or blackish. Don't act black one minute with us, and then you ain't black the next minute with us. One minute you're down with the afro and the fist in the hair, and you got all 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 black leather on but the next minute you the DA throwing us under the bus ha ha key keying with them folks don't be black one minute and then not black the other that goes for everybody and that'll help solve the uh, mulatto issue as was that chapter in the book uh, destruction of black civilization but that's just something to keep in mind Y'all hold it down out there. One.